Father, Father God, I just thank you, Heavenly Father, for all. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, am I on? Okay, I apologize. Good morning, everyone. Good morning at Mount Olive Baptist Church this Sunday morning. Uh, our senior pastor, Pastor Richard Norman, and his wife, Sister Sylvia Norman, let us open up in prayer as we prepare for our Sunday school class. Father God, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day, Heavenly Father. Blessed and highly favored are we, O oh God. Now, as we prepare, Father God, to, uh, to learn more about you by way of our Sunday school lesson this morning, O oh God, we ask, Heavenly Father, first of all, that you remove all natural man out of me, Heavenly Father, so you can freely, O oh God, speak to me and through me, O oh God. And then let every hearer, Father God, uh, let every hearer that's listening, Father God, receive what thus says the Lord. Let our hearts be prepared, Father God, so when we stand in your presence, Father God, after it's all over with Heavenly Father, it would be then uh, brought about changed in our lives. Oh God, we thank you for all that you are and all that you continue to be. In the name that's above every name and at the name of Jesus, let us say thank you and amen. The title of our Sunday school lesson this morning is Daniel Sees Future Kingdoms. Daniel Sees Future Kingdoms. And our reading today is out of Daniel, the 8th chapter, verses 19 through 26. I'll start in verse 19. Verse 19 reads, and it says, And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. The ram which, which thou sawest having two horns are, are, the two king, are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up, Four, four stood up for it, for kingdoms shall stand up out of nations, but not in its power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents and understanding dark sentence shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people verse 25 and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many he shall also stand up against the prince of the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand and the vision of the evening and the morning which is told is true wherefore Shut thou up the vision, for it is, for it shall be for many days. Our golden text this morning, the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Daniel, the eighth chapter, verse 26. And uh, what verse, I want to start almost verse by verse this morning. And in verse 19, Pastor Norman, I hope you have a mic too. And I was doing the studying, and it says here, and it says, what we read in verse 19, it says, And he said, Behold, I will make thee know 
what shall be in the last of the indignation? For at the appointed time, but at the time appointed, the end shall be. What Daniel has, what Daniel had seen in the vision, the angel Gabriel, the angel Gabriel is there to make him know the meaning. The last end of the indignation is God's displeasure, Pastor Norman, it said is God's displeasure over his people Israel, the Jews, for their sins. It wasn't enough that they had gone through 70 years in Babylon. Isn't that something it says, Pastor Norman, it wasn't enough that had, they had gone through 70 years in Babylon, but there are still difficult times for them, and it is at a, a appointed time. Now, my question, uh, Pastor Norman, you would think that the suffering, everything that they went through, 70 years, right? Is, was that because of their disobedience? Brother's not looking. Hey, we have to pay him attention. while you're getting it ready. The 70 years, the 70 years that they were in bondage, it was, I believe, it was before decisions that they had made. But after the 70 years, you would think, okay, 70 years of suffering uh, was clearly enough. That should have been Brother Brown. After going through something for so many years, you would think that, oh man, 70 years, that is enough. It said, but there are still difficult times ahead for them, and it is at a point, what do you mean at a point in time? Not just the 70 years, I thought, man, the suffering, everything would be over with. What is it saying there, Pastor Norman? He's saying that that 70 years and a point in time are two different times. <laughs> the 70 years was deliverance from that, 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 that that first part, of course, you said, as you talked about earlier, is that their disobedience, God took them away, took them out of Israel, and said they would be gone for 70 years in Babylon, and me be returning after that. But the rest of this is some point in time in the future, but it's a time set by God. It's an appointed time. It's a time set by God, not by our time, but by His time. That's what He's talking about, appointed time. Too many things when we deal with time with God, we see it in a plane that we uh, see. You know, we go by weeks, months, hours, minutes, seconds. That's not God's time. That's our time. Yes, we, sir. We, we divided that up. Uh -huh. And so we try to protect, we try to predict things with God by using our measurement of what time is all about. And we say in the word of God, uh, what we call uh, 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 a year or something is just like a vapor to uh -huh. God. So, so the, these, these time limits and everything is basically for our good and everything. So yes. we have an idea of what he is talking about. Because we say 70 years in captivity, that sounds like a long time for us. But to God, it's nothing. And so they've given this 70 years because he said, you're going to be, you know, because, and you pointed it out, their disobedience. God said for 70 years, you will be taken away because they disobedience. Daniel and, the, uh, and his, his three companions all were taken away because of the disobedience of God's people. Amen, amen. Now, my next question, Pastor Norman, I, I touched on it la uh, the other week when I t talked about uh, two different sins, uh, two different sufferings I talked about. Uh, the suffering that they went through uh, because of their decisions, the 70 years, uh, Sister Ardine, that the Israelites, they had to go through, 70 years of suffering. That was because of decisions that they made, correct? Correct. All right, now, but it says here, it says, it says here, it says, but there are still difficult times ahead for them, and it is at a point in time. In other words, 
Now, I want to say this, and I could be kind of going off track a little bit, but I want you to share this part with us. They went through things, uh, some uh, uh, suffering that they had to go through for making bad decisions. Okay, because we're not exempt, whether we God's people or not. When we make bad decisions and we do things we got no business doing, we're going to pay a price for it. And then, but there, God is letting us know that, or letting them know that just because, okay, now that you're, uh, this part of your suffering is over with, and you're no longer suffering for this no more. In other words, you paid your due for this, but still there's going to be other things ahead that you're going to have to deal with in life. And so I'm thinking, so if we know that now that I'm a believer and now that what I went through I'm not going through anymore and now I'm serving God, I got to make sure now knowing that there's still going to be trials ahead in my life that the suffering that I go through now, don't let it be like the suffering before because of the suffering before. Can you explain that, Pastor Norman? Two, two different types of suffering, like when Paul was in prison and he said, my imprisonment has... We, we have to understand prior to us being saved, we, we've gone through some suffering. We suffer, we go through things because, as you say, of bad decisions that we make. We, 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 we go out and rob a store and get caught, and so the consequence of that is spending time in jail. So, so we suffer because of that bad decision that uh, we made. And we have to understand that sometimes we are not exempt, save people, of going through some suffering. I've said once before that all of us tend to think that once we save that everything's going to be over. We're going to be saved. We're going to sit and, 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 and just wait to put on our white robes and our golden slippers and shout all over God's heaven. That's what we're waiting on. But we forget that even Jesus suffered. Uh -huh. There's going to be some suffering in this world. Now, those who are not saved, as I said earlier, you, you make a decision, you rob somebody, you do something, and you go to prison, you got to suffer the consequences. But as saved Christians, we're going to suffer. But the thing is that we're suffering as a test of faith sometimes and also, but when we overcome, it's for the glory of God. We suffer for his glory because we are witness. Once we go through suffering, people see that God gets the glory out Amen. of it. Amen. Remember, Paul was talking about, you know, I th three times I pray prayed and pleaded with God to take this thorn from my side. And he said, no. But my grace. And, and see, so you got to understand Paul's, posi Paul's position. Here's a man of God preaching and teaching and healing other folk. Yes. And so his whole problem was, well, I can heal everybody else. But what about me? What about me? I, I, see, some of us say, I pray for other folk. I, I go and I do good deeds and everything. But yet... I got a thorn in my side, yet I have a problem. What's wrong with this, Lord? And this is our test of faith. Lord, I'm doing good. Yes. I'm feeding the poor. Yes. I I'm lifting other folk up. Yes. I'm going to hospitals. Yes. I'm praying for folk. But, but why do I have this pain? But then, then God told Paul, to, now wait a minute, Paul. You, you, you healing folk, but, but your, 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 your problem is my witness. Uh -huh. My grace is sufficient. Yes. You're, not, you're not healed because that somebody see you suffering, but yet they see you still preaching my word. Amen. Somebody Come see on. you suffering, but you still lifting That's up right. my on. name. So, 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 so sometimes we got to understand something that, that, that he says, my grace is sufficient. See, you get more witness from folks saying, oh, Brother Bobby, you know what? Yeah, I like your word and everything, but your life, I see what you've been through. I've seen what God has overcome in your life. And because of what you he overcome, he says that my grace is sufficient. Uh -huh. uh, amen. So, so some, some of us got to understand that God sends us through things not for you, but for other folk that's right. looking at you. Right. Amen. Amen. And so Paul, I can heal folks. I'm healing folks. I'm doing all this, and yet I can't do nothing for my own problem. Right. 
But God said, don't worry about your problem. Don't worry about your that, problem. That's not why I have you here to, do, to whine and, and, and cry about your problem. Right. My grace will take you through your problem. It'll take you through And keep you doing it. what I have called you to do. Amen. Even your pastors, times I get a little whiny sometimes too. I say, God, I'm trying my best to run this church. I'm trying to do this. And, and they do what is wrong with you? Did I call you to whine or did I call you to, to be out there preaching the word of God? Amen. Amen. Sister Ardeen, you want to say something? Yes, he did. If things will happen, that's right. Amen. Yes. And everything, that's the thing, everything has consequences. That's why, see, what Pastor Norman and Sister Ardeen is talking about, uh, that's why when, if we look at the life of Saul and then became Paul, and then uh, we look at his life, we look at... Uh, some of the things that he went through, but when he got converted, when he got converted and he stepped from, one thing, when he stepped from religion to covenant, so when he had, I'm a Pharisee, when he had, I'm no more than you because I'm taught in the law, I went to the school of Gamiel, when he had all those things and he had this, or I'm Baptist or I'm whatever, you know, I'm Catholic or I'm these things. When he had those things, look at this. He was still persecuting God's people. See, he was still doing those things. But when he, when he left from religion to relationship, and he said now nothing else matters but to know him and the power that's in his resurrection, it's not that suffering is going to stop in his life. But now everything changed in his suffering. Here's what I wrote here. I said, no victory in your suffering. Some people, as believers, as Christians, and we have witnessed it, we have witnessed them go through things, mother, and the absolutely no victory comes out of their suffering. No glory to God comes out of their suffering. Why? Because they're saying, why me, Lord? Oh, me. And look what I'm doing, God. Look at this. Look at that. Why do I have to go through this? Uh, you know I'm a good person. And we're doing all these things. And I shouldn't have to go through this because you know how I'm serving you. And you knowing what I'm doing. Just like the Israelites, when they did that, look what happened. Look what happened. Look what happened to those folks when they did that. Their, their suffering gave no glory to God. But look at Paul. Paul for nothing but doing good when suffering knocked on his door, when challenges like is going to challenge us, when it knocked on the door, what did he do? When it knocked on the door, Paul said something. He said, first thing I want you to understand that I'm in these chains, and I'm paraphrasing, I do, I'm in these chains. You have me locked up in these chains. But these chains that you guys have me in is now for the gospel. And he said, and let me tell you something else. He said, you know what my imprisonment has done? Because of my attitude in the midst of it has encouraged the brethren that's not in prison to even be more bold to go preach the gospel knowing that they could have their head chopped off. See, our attitude when we're suffering as believers can either affect people's life in a positive way or it can hurt them. 
See, because either way, it gives glory to God. It can give glory to God in a positive way, or it can cause people to look at and say, they don't even believe the stuff they were saying. They believed it. They believed it, and they could shout when they bills were paid. They can shout when things was good. They can shout when their body was healed. They can shout when their kids were doing good. But soon as something happened, they like, oh, God, why me? Oh, why me? And their suffering, it got worse. See, their suffering, the Israelites' suffering caused them to not go into a place that God wanted them to go into. Amen. He had already prepared, did he, Pastor Norman? Mm -hmm. He had prepared a place. He said, God has a place, uh, Mother Washington, for each and every one of us mm -hmm. to move in that gives glory and honor to him. But some of us don't move into that place like the Israelites. And why did God say they didn't enter, Pastor Norman? Can you explain why they didn't enter? Uh huh. They didn't enter because of lack of faith. They, they didn't enter to the promised land. Some of us, they, they saw the blessing just across the river. All they had to do was have faith. God gave them, he had, they, the spies came back with the grapes that were so big, two men had to carry them. And, and they, they had all this. They saw the blessing that God had in store for them. But what happened is that they lacked faith because the ones who whenever they come up with showing God, what look a bless God's going give, to give us. They all talk about, you know what? There's some giants over there that's bigger than us. Some of us miss our blessings because instead of looking at the blessing, we look at the, those giants. Then we think we can't get that blessing. See, their lack of faith can, even though they were giants, they need to understand that they serve a God who's bigger than any giant. And so because they serve a God that's bigger than any giant, that should have made no difference. They should have said like Caleb and Joshua said, we're going to march over this river and take this. Because the promise had been made to them already that you will live in houses you didn't build. You will harvest crops that you did not plant. God told them that, but their faith. Their faith. They looked at giants instead of looking at blessings. Mm. How many of us, even my you pastors, look at, at, at giants instead of blessings? Because if God has a blessing for each and every one of us, nobody will defer that blessing from you. No one. Except yourself. God will hold out a blessing. He's got it for you. And you, you, and you, you, you refuse because, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to step forward in there because this might happen. That might happen. But sometimes we got to step out on faith. A whole nation lost a blessing because of lack of faith. Right. Only two had to face it. Uh-uh. We, don't giants nothing. God said, we're going to take this place. Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. But they got voted out. Thank God we don't vote on blessings in business meetings. Amen. And not only that, you think about this. Yes, go ahead.
Yes, and that's in Numbers, the 13th and 14th chapter, what you're talking about. Uh, and the thing is, see, these things that we read about back then, that happened back then. And I know what happened back then, and that's my history back then. But not just for the history. It's not, when we look at it as a history lesson, we get nothing out of it. But I, when I look at it, when I look at and read those stories, I like when uh, the people, when, uh, 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 when uh, Joshua and Caleb told them, and, he t and they said, hey, we can take the land. He said, those giants are like grasshoppers. Just be obedient to the Lord. And then the Israelites, they picked up stones to stone the men of God. And not just stone the men of God, but what they were stoning, they stoning God's word because God said. See, when we pick up things, if God says, just like here it says, to understand that God reveals his eternal plan to us, to encourage and comfort us. See, he reveals these things to encourage and comfort us. So when I look back there and I see these situations, like I heard my cousin, uh, uh, my Uncle Ty, when he was living, Sister Ardeen, he said, I have 11 kids. That boy, I never had to whoop. And he said, the reason why I never had to whoop him, because he said he watched his other brothers and sisters. And he didn't make those mistakes that they made. See, and so these are all examples what happened then, but these should be examples for our benefit so we can learn from, the, from those things. We look at Exodus, uh, the 15th chapter. And before Exodus, the 15th chapter, we see how the suffering of the Israelites. And we see 430 years of slavery. And we see all of that, and then we see how these people cried for help. And then God sent them help. And then by way, by way of a prophet. And Moses came, and then God sent them help, and then God opened the Red Sea. God dealt with Pharaoh's army. And so what I said that to say this, now this is an example to me is that this is when a time when everything is good. When my bills is paid. When me and my wife is no problems, having no problems in the household. When there's no one sick. When my body's 100% mother. Uh, when my kids are okay. Everything is just okay. That's how the Israelites were then. And then if you read in Exodus, the 15th chapter, that's when they said, God's a warrior. God's a mighty God. God destroyed Pharaoh's army, and they just shouting, and, and I can shout easy when things are going good. But they had a journey, what they didn't have to, just like in this lesson, the lesson says here, it says, after 70 years of the Babylonians, he said, but there are still difficult times ahead. And so there were still, uh, uh, to get to the promised land, there were still going to be some obstacles ahead. And so, but what happened <coughs> is now they saw what God did. They saw his goodness. They saw his power. And some of us, all of us, in some way in our life, we have witnessed God's miracle working power operating in our life. Even if we don't read it now, we have witnessed it. I've witnessed what God has done in my life. You witness what God has done in your life. Everybody in here has a testimony of the goodness of God. So if we have that type of testimony of the goodness of God, how can we one day go through some more suffering and suffering that wasn't the suffering that the Israelites were going through, going through 11-day journey on foot? Because if you study it, it was 11-day journey on foot in the, to get to the promised land, and then along the way, they are because uh, they can't get the right food or they can't get water or they can't get this and that. They complaining because you know how we act when we can't get our way. We get to complaining and stuff and when they start doing that and then God showed mercy, grace, and God sent someone to them and say, hey, wait a minute. Look, remember God that helped us? Remember when God, you were in this situation, brother, sister? And God delivered you out of that situation. And so what some of us do, we hear news like that and we say, 
Yeah, I know, but you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand. And if, if God don't see what I did for him, and I did this in my ministry, and I was doing this, and I've been on the battlefield all these years, and, and, and I'm looking over there, and they ain't no good over there, but look at them. They're getting all kind of benefits, or the pastor Norman is favoring them over me. And I did all of this, and he ain't never once mentioned my name. You know, we start doing, internalizing, though, because these are thoughts that come from the devil. It ain't of God. And then when we meditate on those thoughts like that, we start meditating on those thoughts. And we start meditating on those thoughts, and then we start looking at ourselves. And then so we didn't meditate it on those thoughts, and then someone else come along, and they try to speak to us. God sends someone, and they try to speak to us, and then we spit, pick up a stone, and we want to stone them to death. And when they did that, what did God say? God said, I'm going to wipe them out. He said, I'm going to wipe them out. They ain't going into the promised land. First, God was just going to take them out. And then Moses said, Lord, consider, because thank God somebody's praying for us. You know, especially in those times when we complaining and stuff. And God said, but don't, Lord, consider what you're going to do. Because if you kill them, the other people are going to say that the only reason you did it because they couldn't take them in the land. And he said, okay, I won't do that. He said, but they still, from 20 years, was it 20 years and... Uh, what was it, 20 years and up, they would not enter that land. And I said, just because God shows his mercy and grace to you, but because of your decisions, what Pastor Norman was talking about, you still might not enter into that place because they died in a place God never wanted them to die to. Waiting to go to heaven now. All you're doing is waiting to go to heaven with no victory in your life, and you die in your circumstances in the wilderness. And so we have to ask ourselves, does God, if God says when he came to the earth, he came that we may have life and have it to his fullest, do he want us as believers when people are looking at us and when we going through suffering or going through things, all we're doing is complaining, why me and God, or how you doing? Oh, you, let me tell you, oh, sister, let me tell you how bad things is. You just don't know how bad things is. Boy, and, they tell, and when you finish, you say, I'm never going to ask that person nothing again in life. And when I see them, I'm going to go the other way, you know. Because I was telling someone today, and, I told, and they went to tell me something earlier, and then I said, wait a minute. I said, I don't want it. Because what I'm learning now is not to take in certain things, mother. Not that I think I'm better than you. Because if you come to me, and you come to me, or I go to you, mother, and I say, you know, Pastor Norman, mother, let me tell you something about him. And I don't want you to tell nobody. But uh, it's a secret. But let me tell you what he did. And he dotted out. And you start listening to that mess. And it probably not true. Because I'm going to put things in my favor. And you listen to it. And what you listen to it, even if you don't receive it, you still have to filter that stuff out. See, you have to take in something and you have to filter out something that God doesn't want you to filter out. And so there's things we should never, ever, ever take in. So I don't want to take in when you come to me, if I give you a solution like uh, Caleb and Joshua told to people that we can go into the land, only do this, and you pick up stones. Now you, when you pick up a stone, it wasn't that they was going to kill the people. They were stoning the things of God. They were saying, God, you know what? You're a liar. You can't do this. I know what you did over here, but I don't believe you can do this because if you can do this, we would never go through nothing. Everything our whole life would be hunky-dory. You know, there would be no suffering in our life. And we act as though we don't. I, maybe we've heard some of those sermons say you'd never have to get sick or you never have to go through no sermon or everybody should be rich if you just pay your tithes and you're going to get you a new car and all of that. And we know that's not true. We know that's not true. Because even if you get the new car, it don't mean that the next day you might not get sick. See, things are going to happen. Anyone have something to say, Pastor Norman? You want to? Anyone? The 
floor is open to everyone. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the next one. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you this, Pastor Norman. It says here, I'm going to just skip to 21. It says, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between the eyes is the first king. The rough goat being the male goat is Alexander the Great of Greece. This goat had one large horn. The goat defeated the ram, sheep. The army of Greece defeated the army of Media and Persia. Gabriel described, here we go, Pastor Norman. Gabriel described the great horn, big horn, as very powerful being Alexander the Great. However, he died at a young age of 33 years old. In Daniel's dream, the great large horn broke when the goat was very great. Now, I got something for myself out of that. Go ahead, sister. We're in uh, Daniel, the eighth chapter, verse 21 right now. Yeah. Now, you want to? The last verses that you read is a, a dream. Remember, Daniel, in our prior lesson, had these dreams that were given to him. And this scripture is, this is about the future kingdoms that were going to take place. And Daniel was given this revelation and predicting these kingdoms. And as we talked last week, these earthly kingdoms is what he's discussing. And we find out as, as they represent different, these, they, this, the metaphors about the beast and the different uh, 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 figures that he sees in the dream represents manly kingdoms that were going to come and go as you said about Alexander the Great we have historical uh, things and that tell you about these different kingdoms and the different uh, conquerors and things of that nature but one thing they let Daniel also know is the fact that these kingdoms do not last these man made kingdoms how many we've gone through history and seen great kingdoms of earth emerge and they last for a while but sooner or later they what they fall and disappear and one of the kings they talk about is uh, the Greek kingdom Alexander the Great who died when he was 20 something years old he conquered most of the known world but as soon as he died the kingdom that he found that he went through Greece Persia conquering everybody he he was the king you know but the problem was that men's kingdoms do not last and when he died he died I believe at the age of 23 he was a great king but see man's kingdom only lasts when man who founded the kingdom is still here once they leave this, the kingdom falls. It falls. And it shows us that any kingdom that's put on this earth by man or founded by man will not last. And, God, and he is given these interpretations of all these different kingdoms that that been established become great kingdoms. They last a while. But one thing, no matter what they, how they last in man's time, they do not last at all in God's time. We, 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 we historically dig up uh, artifacts of kingdoms that's long gone. And that's all that's left of them, artifacts. But the kingdom of God will last forever. Gabriel's giving him this, this example saying, and one thing is, each of these kingdoms fail. But the kingdom of God will be established and it, it will never fail. Yes. It's like we're going through this uh, 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 political things now. Who's going to be president? Who's going to do this? And who's going to do that? That's man. No matter who is and going to become, it's not going to be forever because it is not going to be established. That's right. Man's brain is limited. We are limited beings. None of us is going to live forever. And we know that for a fact. And the kingdoms that we fought, fought we fought, fought, uh, that we we establish will not last forever, but we know the kingdom of God will last forever. Amen. 
That's why we put our hope and our faith in God and not in man. You, you, could, be the, you could have the greatest kingdom in the world. We, we as a nation got to be careful because we are we the most powerful nation in the world. Rome said that too. Yes. Greeks said that, they said yes. that too. The Mongols said that too. What happened. Yeah, but look what happened. Where are they now? So we have to be careful of that. The only king we have is God. And Daniel is getting this. And, and he's trying to, one of the reasons for that, he's trying to get this his own. We're talking about our lesson, interceding. Daniel's interceding on behalf of his country. He's getting his dreams and trying to explain to the people of Israel just what they need to do. Stop falling and stop trying to be all this kingdom, but follow God. And as you follow God, he will take care of you. Amen. You must understand, remember you talk about 70 years of this. The 70 years is almost up. Yes. And they're about to return home. He's trying to establish them to do right so they don't get into this position again. Amen. Amen. Next, hold the mic, Pastor Norman. It says, now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nations, but not in his, not in his power. When he died, his, imp his empire was divided among the four generals fulfilling the prophecy in the, this verse. Four kingdoms rose up after his death, divided it up among themselves, but they were not very powerful. Not in his power meant that Alexander the Great did not designate these kingdoms to them because he was dead. They, they, they were... And then verse 20, 23, and I'm just, it says, And in the latter times of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents and understanding, dark sentences shall stand up. In the latter times of their kingdom refers to these four kingdoms rising up out of the great dominance. One particular king was to be outstanding for his fierce opposition to God's people, Israel. The little horn of verse 9 corresponds to the king of fierce continents who was completely wicked. This describes... Aeneas, Ephenes, king of Seleucia, I might pronounce that wrong, be pronouncing it wrong, the empire, the emperor, the empire, I'm sorry, one of the four kingdoms that emerged after Alexander the Great. His reign over the Seleucid destiny, one, uh, destiny, 175 to 164 BC, he is remembered mostly for his triantico. That means he was a persecutor. He was wicked. That word triantico, triantico I looked it up. It means wicked. Uh, persecution uh, of the Jews. Uh, then he says he had ceased. To th he has ceased the throne from his nephew and enlarged the kingdom through military power. In other words, I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to turn it over to you, Pastor Norman, for time, for time's sake. See, we worrying about things that I think, and, and I stand to be corrected, there's nothing wrong with knowing what's going on in the world, you know. But just get mad at one another and we worrying about who's going to do this or you know, and how things are going to be and how it's going to affect our life. Number one, first of all, the Lord says suffering going to come. And there's things that he's going to be allow. He's going to allow. And even though wicked, it's wicked, the things that he's allowing, it's going to be some wicked people that's going to stand up in power. And so he's going to allow that. 
But one thing God has been showing us all through our lives, and he's been true to it, that no matter what situation is that we're in, that for those that remain faithful, he said, I never leave you nor forsake you. I'm there. He said, all things is working for the good for those that love me. If you love me, the Bible says, keep my commandments. If you love me, God says in Matthew, the sixth chapter, why are we worrying about these things? Starting at verse 25, just look around. He says, look at the lilies of the fields. Look at the simple things. Aren't you more important than these things? I called you because... Matthew, the 28th chapter, he said, a body I need, a body I need. I have to go back to heaven, a body I need. So if you seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness, then the things you can't take care of, all these threats and stuff like that, didn't you see those three Hebrew boys go in the furnace, what I did there? Didn't you see Daniel go in the lion's den? You see what I did there? Didn't you know, don't you know somebody that had cancer that I delivered from? Don't you know somebody that was going to lose their home that I delivered from? Don't you know somebody that was going through this or that that I helped in the midst of that when it seemed like there was no help? I stepped in because they remained faithful. And if I can do those things, the things that I'm allowing is because if I allow it, that means I have authority over it. That's just like with Job. Job never thought about, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the devil never thought about Job. Never one time thought about Job. He never thought about attacking him. God said, God said, have you considered my servant? He said, yeah, but I can't touch him. I already know, so that's out. I haven't even thought about that. I'm thinking about other stuff, but I'm not thinking about that right there because I can't touch him because I know you got heads around him, and I can't do it because if I could, I would do it. If I could, I wouldn't even talk to you. I'll wipe you out, God. And so he can't do none of those things, and God promised that, he would never leave us nor forsake it. He would be there. But the things that we see in the world, the things we hear from the media and all of that stuff, it's just to cause confusion amongst us. It's to cause us to focus on that more than we focus on God. I understand what's going on, and I don't want to be ignorant of these things. And we can, if we want to say this, we can vote for whoever we want to vote for. Whether I'm right or wrong, I'm going to vote for who I'm going to vote for. But God is still in control. I understand that. So I'm not going to be mad at you. And I know the end, when we get to the end chapter, when we get to the end, I know one thing. It says, it says we win. In other words, God reigns. When he come over, ain't going to be no other authority. And this is his kingdom anyway. God established this. He said, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. And so if it's his and God established, God put the heavens, the stars, ain't no president did none of that. I don't care who you put in office. They ain't put no stars. They not holding the moon in its place. They not holding the sun in its place. Almighty God, they didn't put no ocean out there. None of those things. God's did it. He put it out there. He's keeping it. And he did it for our benefit. And the things that we should build on, we should build on the things of God. And if we build on the things of God, then we don't have to fear those things. Amen. And we fear those things, he said, because in 1 John 4, 19 and 20, he said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. We fear because we haven't been made yet perfect in love. No, I'm not perfect, but I'm striving towards perfection. Amen. So that what I did fear yesterday, I don't want to fear tomorrow. See, I don't want to continue to fear these things that I used to fear. The troubled things that used to trouble me and the problems that I used to have in my relationship, 
I shouldn't continue to have those problems because God says we should be going from glory to glory. It's not that what Paul say, it's not that I have been imperfect or been perfected yet, but this one thing I do do, I'm forgetting what's behind because I'm pressing on towards what's ahead. I press towards the prize of the upward calling that's in Christ Jesus. Pastor Norman, will you pray us out, say what you, and then pray us out. We, we, one thing we'll remember about the lessons that these kingdoms were given examples where men made kingdoms and they have long since disappeared. Let us remember the only kingdom that would last would be that of the, our heavenly king, Jesus himself. Father God, we thank you for this time of study. Amen. We thank you for our teacher. We thank you for those in the audience. We thank you for our sister who participated, Father. We thank you for everybody, Father. Now, Father, we pray for our, our Christian education while in our Sunday school. Now, Father, as we get further into our service this morning, we for blessing on our morning worship experience, Father. So, Father, we praise you. We give you honor and glory forever. And let the church say, Amen. Amen.